Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Game Esoteric, and I got a really fun episode for you guys this Friday, because about three years ago I did a tutorial on the Supermodel 3 emulator, and since I'm doing the Sega Arcade Racing Retrospective right now, I've been getting a lot of questions about this emulator and how to use it on your computer, so as opposed to answering those comments individually, I figured I would redo the tutorial, because this has been updated since I last made that. Before I get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But the Supermodel emulator is amazing. Now I do have a large collection of Model 3 arcade boards with the ROM boards for the games, but when I am capturing and I want that widescreen 16x9, nothing beats the Supermodel emulator. It is spectacular. But the first thing we need to do is talk about how to actually download the emulator itself because you do need to be a member of the Supermodel forum to get the most current build. If you find anything else on the internet and it's not from here, it's probably not current. But it is under a catwalk and it is sticky at the top. The current build is going to be 886. So you want to download this. And if you do join the forums and become an active member, tell them I sent you. It's always fun. But once we have this, there's one other set of files that I like to use because Supermodel is a command line based formula with a DOS prompt. I grew up with DOS, I know how to use it, but honestly, a user interface that you can click and articulate different settings is going to be a lot easier for everyone, including me, so you will grab the Supermodel 3 UI as well from wherever you so choose. But once we get those two files, you're going to see you can install them in any folder you want. This application doesn't install, it just unzips, and you'll see that it creates two folders. I use the x64 for 68-bit support, and then I will take that UI zip, and I will copy it into the folder I am using, and unzip the files there. You just need to make sure that the UI program is in the same folder as supermodel.exe, or it will not run. But once you do that, you're going to see Supermodel 3 UI. Double click that, and we're going to be in to the emulator itself with that user interface on the front and that makes a big difference because there's so much stuff you can do the first thing you need to do is point it to the games that you own and where those files are located on your computer it does not matter where you hold them you just need to make sure that, that file pathing is correct or nothing will launch most of the settings off the top are correct leave it on new 3d engine and you can decide whatever internal rendering resolution you want I use 1920 by 1080 because it allows me to capture for YouTube effectively and then I have to deal with 4K sizes. I leave VSync on, GPU multi-threaded, and multi-threaded should also be on as well. And by default, it's going to extend the games to 16 by 9. You can turn that off for 4 by 3 and we'll get into that later as to why that might be important. And you can do wide background as well, which will allow for some of these skyboxes to extend by 16 by 9. You leave sound as is, and under control, if you want a controller, put it on X input, and then you're going to go ahead and click config down below. Now this is a situation where you do need to use the DOS prompt, but you're just going to use whatever controller you want. I use an Xbox One X controller, and press the buttons as you see fit to assign them. And this will continue to go through the calibration until you have all your controls bound. Now, I'm not going to be talking about send in light gun support in Supermodel 3. That would be a different video. Leave me a comment down below if you want to see that. But now you'll see here, once that's all set up, if we just select a game, we'll go into Scud Race. Now, a big thing that always trips people up is some of these games are supposed to have more than one PCB attached. You'll see here when it tries to launch the game, it's trying to launch as a master board, and that means it's looking for a secondary board to connect to. If you go into the test menu and you switch link ID to single, that is going to allow you to get into the game. Some of these boards were sold as network boards and they will not boot unless they are set as a single board. You can also do stuff like change different difficulty settings and motor power. If you have a wheel with force feedback, it would be supported. But just remember, if you just keep getting a boot loop and it says link ID master, you need to set it as a single board. Then you will get into the game and you will be playing. I'm using an Xbox One X controller, and I also have a wheel that I use for this as well, but that's the great thing. It supports so many different controller types. But there is a readme file in the folder, and what you need to know is that you cannot change the configuration of the emulator functions. Getting into the test menu, the service switches, things such as that are hard-coded to be certain key commands. So go ahead and open up this tutorial text, and you'll see right here, all of those different keys are available and it'll also tell you the service and the test menu button because those are going to be super important but i will say not only does the supermodel emulator work perfectly it sounds incredible so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and i'll be right back
Now you may have noticed that there was some garbage in the extended 16x9 area and that happens a lot on loading but if for some reason you don't like that I don't mind it at all. If we go back to the UI settings and we just take off wide background and wide screen and go back into the game it's going to be running at its native 4x3 resolution. This is great if you want to output to an external monitor that might be 4x3. It can be very tricky but you can get it done and you will see here that in between rounds we're not going to have that same garbage on the screen. It really doesn't bother me whatsoever but I understand that some people don't like that or want to play the games in the original aspect ratio so if you just turn off those two options you'll be playing whatever game you want in its native aspect ratio and when loads do occur you're not going to get anything off to the left and right hand side of the screen it's going to function exactly as it should but honestly I like it better widescreen because 99 out of 100 times it's going to just look that much better but let's put that back on and go to another game to explain exactly why widescreen is great and also some glitches you may encounter and how to fix them because Sega Rally 2 is an absolutely spectacular game and playing this in 16x9 at 1920 by 1080 is absolutely amazing but this is one of the trickier games to get running correctly. Let's go in game, show you what it's supposed to look like, then we'll show you what it's not supposed to look like and how to fix it. As you'll see right here, it just looks incredible. It's running at an amazing pace. We have that full 16x9 support. We have the upscaled internal resolution. And I'm playing with a wheel now that's not perfectly calibrated, but having that wheel is amazing. And don't forget, you can go in the test menu and calibrate wheels as well. These boards do have internal settings for that sort of function. But you can tell nothing really is broken here. Everything looks exactly as it should. And that is because I've changed some settings that are important for a few games. But let's go over to a version that is not running correctly in 3, 2, 1. Now you will see that we're going to be getting some weird graphical glitches. The car is going to clip in and out of existence and some of the art on the sides is going to be a problem as well. And this is down to the internal CPU speed. Now Model 3 had more than one game and more than one board with different revisions and if you get something like this where art is missing versus what it should look like when you have the correct CPU clock speed set, that means we go into the CPU clock slider and adjust it until it works. You'll see here it goes from 5 to 183. I find that 76 is the sweet spot. I leave it at 76. Every single game runs as normal. And when you switch it over to the correct clock for something like Sega Rally 2, all of those glitches go away. It's just because the clock speed is too slow. And that's because the different step revisions of the Model 3 hardware had different clock speeds. So that adjuster is there. And if you find that a game is running incorrectly, maybe lowering it on some games might be effective. But honestly, 76 just seems to be perfect for me. But this doesn't just support fighting games, it doesn't just support racing games. There's so many different genres on the Model 3. And the great thing is, is we have so many different ways to control them. You can use a controller, you can use a mouse, you can do something like the Sindon light gun. And if you want a tutorial on that, leave me a comment down below because I've been thinking about making one, but I want to see what interest is out there because it's a little bit hard to do that. But honestly, something like the Ocean Hunter here is an absolutely spectacular game with perfect calibration and it looks amazing on the Supermodel emulator. It is a hidden gem, definitely play it and I'll leave a link to my playthrough below. But sometimes you're going to notice that the calibration is off. Here in Jurassic Park, my aim is like 2 inches to the right and 1 inch down versus where I am pointing. And that is because we are messing with the internal rendering resolution of the game. And that can throw the calibration off sometimes. So we do have an easy way to fix that. But most people don't realize that if they don't collect these type of arcade boards. In the test menu, you're going to have different settings. And under this setting right here, you're going to be able to both check your aim as well as recalibrate the aim. So if you see that anything is not aligned as to how you would expect it to be, just come in here and recalibrate the aim and you will be 100% fine. And if you follow all the directives of this tutorial, you'll be playing Supermodel on your computer and it'll be amazing. But if you have any questions or run into any trouble, leave me a comment down below and I'm happy to help. I'll have a video next Friday and video throughout the week as well. But yeah, this is amazing. See you guys next time. Bye bye.